Uh, hello guys, we're here to talk about network analysis today. Uh, have any of you guys heard of network analysis before? Uh, no one. So uh, the tool that we're going to use for it is called Gephi. It's a free tool. And uh, we'll just dive into first an uh, overview of what network analysis involves. And then while I'm demoing the tools, you guys can ask any questions as we go. So first of all, the network's all around us. We have a lot of like simple data sets that we usually work with. But uh, we have a lot of you know, very connected data in our world today. And network analysis is just a way of kind of trying to get a lot of value from that uh, data, bigger data, very easily and make it into ways that we can kind of uh, unbiasedly look at the data and shape the data and then see what trends we find. So like for emails, you'd have like uh, the people sending the emails and who they're sending it to would be other people. And those would be like the connection between two people. For like, uh, which you, for, so you could look at like uh, the emails of a company and see who is sending emails to who between departments and where there's good communication versus bad communication. You can look at uh, you know, your social network and map out, see where your friends are connected to each other. You can uh, look at research papers and who they co-author or who they cite. And you kind of find the biggest players in certain areas of research very easily. And like uh, Google Maps is an example of it as well, with uh, mapping out how you get to one place or another. You have destinations, and you have like the streets or the uh, airplane routes and anything between. And the internet itself, like Google PageRank, uh, it, it relies upon network analysis to figure out who the major players are between websites. So this is kind of uh, an example of what it would look like. Uh, we're talking about like uh, individual players, like uh, would be the nodes the little dots, and then the lines between them are the connections. So uh, when you look at the individual variables, like the names of the variables, we talk about those dots as being the nodes in the graph, and then the edges are the connections between them. And those edges can be uh, like weighted, so you can have like one street, it might be, look the same, but it takes a certain length to tra traverse it. And uh, you can have like a direction, so you can have like, I cited someone in my paper, but they didn't cite me back. And uh, then we can go into dive in and just quickly describe a couple of metrics that are then u very useful. Uh, centrality is a big one, trying to get an idea of who are, like the main players in the network are. Uh, degree centrality is what you would normally think of in terms of like uh, it's just how many connections we have, like how who has the most friends on Facebook. And uh, uh, closeness centrality looks at like uh, you know what's the you know average distance from me to every other, if, if, my, what's, if I'm one node, uh, what's the average of all the distances between the nodes, other nodes that I could reach? So how long would it take me on average to reach another node? And uh, that can be pretty useful if you're like, trying to figure out where to put your pizza place. Uh, and between the centrality is also is very interesting because it uh, looks at something we call the least cost path, which is say, any, like, any two nodes have a one least cost path, which is like the most efficient way to get from that node to that node. And you look at what other nodes uh, fall. The Pinus Centrality measures how many, uh, how many least cost paths you fall upon as, as far as the network as a whole is concerned. And the other thing we'll talk about is clustering. So you can kind of uh, easily identify different uh, groups that are formed. Clustering coefficient is what you usually talk about, which can be at max one. And if it is a max one, that means that every other node in that group references all of the other nodes in that group. And that's called a click. And we have uh, a tool to plug these graphs into your JavaScript and manipulate in JavaScript. Uh, I'm going to demo that real quick. Uh, it's called Sigma. So you can see the web page and kind of the idea of what you can kind of do. Uh, I have this very simply. Uh, this is just something I plugged in a graph for. In terms of what the actual code looks like, you just have uh, uh, you grab a file, a pre-made file like this, or make your own file that has a lot of settings in here that you kind of just ignore. And if you just put your gexf file that you would get from Gephi into here, you can then look at your own, say. Facebook network very easily and hover over and see all different people among your friends and how they connect. 
Now I'm going to dive quickly into what Gephi actually looks like. So when you start off originally, you need to put in like your data. And for that, it looks like we can take a quick gander. It's just uh, kind of like, like a text file. I think this is Java, technically. Uh, but you have your nodes that you define. And then you def also define the edges. You can put like, you know, metadata on the nodes but, and weights and stuff on the edges. And once you get in here, you just have a billion different options for what you can play around with. Like, so I can see if I'm curious about the, how, the degree, how, many, like, uh, how many people have how many connections in my group, I can run quick data like this and see the degree distribution. And the degree is how many other connections a single node has. So you can quickly like, see that like, you know, there's a couple people who have you know, up, to, up to over 200 uh, connections with each, with, with, within my friends. And uh, I, I found this very, this is my old uh, Facebook data. I have a couple more friends now and more than just two, three groups. But uh, I found this very curious originally when I found that uh, like this is my high school friends. Uh, this is my Northwestern friends. And this is Northwestern fraternity friends. So there's high correlation between these two groups, but it still can be pointed out. And then there, over in this section, there's different ways you can organize your data. So this is like just different algorithms that you can run that will then reposition your data, trying to form, find a way to make it look like in a useful format. Though Efan really knows his stuff, so I like using him. You can come back all the way there. And then there's a lot of options for, you can either, you can look at any individual point, click on it with this tool and see properties that you laid on it. Uh, and then you can also use a tool like this to color so, uh, the shortest distance between two points. So let's choose blue. And uh, say we're right here. And we wanted to get all the way over here. It would theoretically color that blue. Oh, there, that, that time it worked. So there, so click somewhere in here, and then the blue ones are the ones that are the shortest path between the two. And there's also like options like uh, coloring all the nodes that are nearest neighbor of some nodes. So say we choose color, and you want to be able to easily tell, because we say we know one node well, and we want to be able to make sure we mark it, it his, their friends as important, you can then click on any individual uh, node, and it would theoretically be coloring it right now. <laughs> it's not the uh, smoothest running software ever, but it has like many, many, many different tools built into it. Do we have any general questions about this? Or network analysis as a whole? Yeah, any network data, so as long as you have nodes and edges. Are there like APIs to create that network data in the correct format, or is it the painstaking data entry to generate so, this type of stuff? So there's, uh, you would have to create it, though there's also like a lot of uh, uh, like data sets out there already that you can get a, get a hold of. So I think in here, you have some examples of like, just some basic social networks that they have, someone's karate club, uh, and jazz musicians, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of network data out there already that you can use and plug right in here. But I think the fun is with Sigma, you can have it very easily to be like, you know, interactable on your website. And you, how you change it in Gephi affects it in terms of how it will uh, here. Like you can also have like this bar originally worked when I downloaded this and then for some reason just stopped working. But this would have like more specific information about any individual node that you're clicking on. Oh actually it's working again. Sweet. So where you can click on someone and see like their like links and like 
some attributes that you've identified as well. Yes, Jason? What do those numbers? Uh, which numbers? Uh, I'm wondering if that that might be the like a value on the edge, like uh, how you know because edges themselves can be weighted, so it can be like what what maybe I think this is like the miserable characters from the book, so it might be like how often they like talk during the book, something like that. You can also like, zoom over to see details better, something like that. All right, thank you guys.